It will go into the high performance desktop enthusiast market. You see that the Zen CPU uh, just edged out that Broadwell E processor in that demo. It's a super exciting time in the world of tech right now, especially if you're a gamer. This year we've seen the introduction of Nvidia's highly efficient and extremely fast Pascal architecture along with AMD's sensible, affordable Polaris 10 and 11 GPUs. Of course there's still much more to come from AMD on the GPU front, though I feel many, like myself, are even more pumped for their upcoming Zen CPU architecture. The path to Zen has been a long and arduous one, mostly down to how badly the FX series fizzled out and Intel's less than aggressive pricing strategy for their enthusiast chips. If you want an Intel processor with at least 6 cores, be prepared to pay almost 400 US dollars or 550 Aussie for an older generation Haswell E 5820K. Want 8 cores? Well, stand up, loosen your belt and bend, well, what I mean to say is be prepared to spend at least 1000 US or over 1300 Aussie for the privilege. Things get even worse with Intel's latest generation Broadwell E processors. My 6950X review was titled Broadwell E, Bleeding Enthusiast Dry, so enough said there. This has left pretty much everyone banking on Zen to deliver the goods and with IPC claims of 40% greater performance than Bulldozer, we're expecting good things. During an event held in San Francisco, AMD finally provided additional details regarding Zen's architecture, along with a few other tidbits. The highlight of which was a demonstration of their 8-core, 16-thread processor codenamed Summit Ridge, outperforming a similarly configured 8-core, 16-thread Intel Broadwell E processor. The processors were compared at identical clock speeds of 3GHz using the multi-threaded Blender rendering software. Taking on the Core i7 6900K, AMD's CPU was reportedly able to render the scene in about half a second faster than the Intel chip. AMD also conducted the first public demonstration of its upcoming 32-core, 64-thread Zen-based server processor, codenamed Naples, in a dual processor system running the Windows Server operating system. What makes Zen so exciting is that it's essentially a new start for AMD and should allow them to move past the disaster that was the FX series. This clean sheet approach has allowed AMD to design a new cache hierarchy, improve branch prediction, as well as upgrade their simultaneous multi-threading. This, in conjunction with multiple architectural advances designed to increase the performance, throughput and efficiency, should see AMD once again able to take the fight to Intel. In fact, Zen-enabled CPUs should be able to fight not only at the high end, but also scale down to meet the needs of a broad range of applications, including fanless 2-in-1s and embedded systems for example. Adding to what we already know about Zen, AMD confirmed the desktop versions will utilize a new cache memory hierarchy with 8MB of L3 cache in addition to an improved prefetcher, separate low latency L1 instruction and data caches as well as a larger unified L2 cache. Much of the reason AMD's bulldozer architecture struggled had to do with slow caches. Of course, as many of you might have expected, Zen is built on the same 14 nanometer FinFET process as their Polaris GPUs. FinFETs are similar to what Intel calls Trigate or 3D transistors. AMD also added that it's improved the instruction schedule window by 1.75 times and its execution resources by 1.5 times. All things considered, Zen should provide around 5 times the amount of bandwidth to its core compared to previous designs. The only bad news here is that Zen has been delayed until early 2017, though at this point I think that just about everyone had part of the idea of Zen for Christmas. Expected to launch first, the Zen-based Summit Ridge desktops will utilize the AMD AM4 socket. This new socket will unify AMD's platforms as it will also support 7th generation AMD A-series desktop processors, previously codenamed Bristol Ridge. Interestingly, while Zen has been pushed back until next year, the AM4 platform hasn't been. The first desktop systems featuring the 7th gen A-series APUs on the brand new AM4 socket is scheduled to ship in the second half of 2016 in OEM PCs. The updated AM4 platform is another godsend for AMD fans as well as AMD themselves. Having been uncompetitive for so long in the CPU space, motherboard makers have been less interested in developing new AM3 motherboards. With no new chipsets from AMD to support the latest features, the platforms become very outdated. AM4 will change all that. I say AM4 and not its accompanying chipsets because there shouldn't be a chipset as such. Summit Ridge isn't technically a CPU, but rather an SOC, system on chip. This means there's no need for a chipset as most of the functionality is built right into the processor itself. That said, we could end up seeing something like Intel's Platform Controller Hub for handling certain features. Technology such as DDR4 memory, PCIe Gen 3, USB 3 Gen 2, NVMe storage and SATA Express will all be supported by the processor. 
Not only that, but dedicated PCIe lanes for cutting edge USB, graphics, data and other I.O. will be provided by the processor so the AM4 platform will not steal lanes from other devices and components. Wrapping things up, we still don't know much about AMD's target clock speeds, thermal output, pricing and so forth. AMD did say, however, that it plans to provide additional details at next week's Hot Chips conference, so we should have some juicy information in the not too distant future. For now though, we can pretty well rest on the comfort of knowing that Zen is legit, it's no longer just a bunch of claims by AMD. The demo proved that Summit Ridge is the real deal and can take the fight to Intel's Broadwell E CPUs. Yep, I'm tingling inside. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time. YouTubers like me depend on your support to continue improving the quality and content of our videos. To support the channel directly, consider becoming a patron to also get access to a heap of cool rewards and exclusive giveaways. Also, don't forget you can check prices and buy the products I looked at in this video through the Amazon links in the video description below. Thank you kindly for supporting me and the Hardware Unbox channel, it means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it, and in return I'll continue to work as hard as I can to keep producing the content you enjoy.